Hi, welcome to the Creative Grove. I'm Ingrid Blackburn, and we're going to create this fun distress card based off this multi-layered card. So I wanted to recreate the multi-layered card into a one-layer card. So to do that, I needed to mask off certain areas. I'm starting off by holding down my one-layer card with some post-it notes. The top two are really to hold it in place horizontal masks across. I'm masking off one and a quarter inches here and I'm using my grid paper to help line up my mask from left to right. You can of course use a clear acrylic grid or ruler underneath as well. And I'm leaving a space of about one and a half inches to color in using distress inks. We're going to use Ranger Distress Inks, uh, Mustard Seed, Seedless Preserves, as well as Broken China. So these three shades we're going to apply using the mini sponge tools. We're going to start off with the yellow in the center and this is the biggest color that we're going to place down because we're going to end up overlapping the other two. You want to start off your paper and end off your paper and I'm holding the sponge really lightly and applying it in a light fashion because I don't want to press down too hard and get some really really funky uh, shapes from the tool itself. So here we're doing the broken china and we're just slightly overlapping it and then once we've overlapped it a little bit I'm going to concentrate more on the part that's really just going to showcase the blue. We're going to come back with the mustard seed which will smooth out any funky little shapes that you have when you overlapped your two colors and it will also brighten up your area as well. Distress inks by nature are extremely translucent and they are great to do this type of shading with. Uh, they act very much like watercolors being that they are translucent and you can see I'm doing the same thing as I did with the Broken China. This is the Seedless Preserves. I'm concentrating more on the portion that is going to be more purple and not so much on the overlapped part. So now what I was pointing to is I wanted to kind of smooth that out and by coming back over with the mustard seed again, it's going to smooth out anything that you have, you know, when you overlap the two colors. So now that we have that down, we're going to cover this. These are just some plastic sheets that I use for my uh, stamp -a jig You can use anything, plastic bags, transparencies. I'm going to take a little bit of water. I have uh, just a spritzer. I'm going to open that up and place some in the palm of my hand. I'm going to allow the water to run to my fingers and I'm just going to flick it at my project. So once I flick that onto there, I'm going to take a paper towel and just kind of sop up any paper because this is a one layer card. It's not going to have multi layers that will hide the back of it. So I don't want it, the water to sit on there too long. I'm just going to pull that away. And it kind of ran a little bit at the bottom, which is no big deal because we're going to actually do that black stripe. And you want to definitely dry this from both sides using your heat tool immediately. I sped this part up quite quickly. And you can see that that water reacts with the distress inks in almost like a bleach. It doesn't do that completely with watercolor paints, but it does with the distress inks. Distress inks are made to react with water. Uh, it's just got some really cool properties. Now I'm kind of missing, I'm pointing to a spot that was kind of missing a little bit. So I'm taking Aqua Painter. This is just a pen that has water in the tube, the shaft portion of it. I'm just getting that quite wet and I'm just going to kind of tap it against my finger just to flick some more down. Sorry my camera went a little out of focus there. And then we're going to go ahead and dry that as well. And that just gave us that little bit more of a controlled splotch. It ended up looking really nice and you can see it's starting to bleach out once we're drying it. Now here's the original. That was many layers there. The entire strip, the happy, the birthday was all layered. Looking pretty 
pretty similar. Now you can see my original didn't have a strong color because I didn't place as many layers on top of each other. That's the real difference between the two and I'll have close-ups again towards the end here. Now we're going to use the Thanks set by Simon Says Stamp. Love the stamp set and I am going to use a scripty thanks and the word a million. I love using the photopolymer. It's nice and easy to figure out exactly where you want things. So we're going to emboss both of these, but we're going to emboss them in different colors. Now remember we're going to duplicate that strip of black strip of cardstock that we had. And to do that, we're going to do a little emboss resist technique. So once I know where that thanks is going, I am laying down my acrylic block on top of my word here. I'm lining up that line with the bottom edge of color. I'm just going to use a little bit of a de-static tool here and then take some Versamark ink. We're going to ink up that a million and we're going to stamp that down where we wanted it and then we're going to add some white embossing powder. The de-static tool is really important here because you added so much color you want to make sure that nothing sticks to anything. It could still be a little wet even though you did your best to dry it and you don't want any embossing powder to stick to that. So we're going to heat this to, from both sides and that will heat that up really quickly. And I know you can't see it because it's white, but you will see it as soon as we add the black ink over it. So now I'm going to do the same again, add a little bit more of, that was actually an embossing buddy to my space and we're going to grab our thanks and we're going to do the same thing like we did with the a million. We're going to ink that up with Versamark which is a watermark ink. It's perfect. It's a pigment ink. It's perfect for embossing and rather than use white we're going to actually use black embossing powder here and that will help that to pop against the colorful background that we've created. So we're going to go ahead and add this and you want to make sure that you don't have any stray black flecks. So you're going to remove those as well. Just going to get rid of that. Get that melt. Heat that from both sides. It just helps the embossing process go much faster when you do that. So that's looking pretty good. So now we need to mask off a quarter of an inch on the bottom. So we're just going to leave ever so slightly a little bit of color there and we're going to completely mask that off. Leave about a quarter of an inch. We want to make sure to cover the entire space where our a million is. If I had to read to do this card over again I would probably shift all of this a little downward and probably only leave a half of an inch of white at the bottom. As it is, we will end up with about an inch because when we masked our area for our distress inks, I did that at one and a quarter inches and then picked another one and a half inches of space. So I would probably pull the whole thing down a little bit more, but I didn't really figure that out until the end, of course. So now that we have that, we're going to take some Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I love this ink. It's just a really nice black, and I'm just taking a sponge, and I'm just going to dab it over the Amelian. You'll see that Amelian really kind of pop there, and you want to make sure to get this area quite saturated. So I'm focusing on where my greeting is first, and then we're just going to kind of mostly pounce rather than swirl, and we're going to go to make sure that this is really dark because we want to have that nice contrast to the white card as well as the colorful flicked background that we created with the distress inks. So that's looking pretty good. I think we're almost done here. And then what we'll do is we'll just peel that away and we have an amazing colorful greeting with a stripe highlighting some different shades of embossing powder and it's all on one layer. We're just going to rub that 
over there just to kind of get rid of any black that is hanging on to our embossed greeting there. And the other thing you can do is you can also zap it with a, gun, a heat tool one more time and that will just help brighten it up a little bit as well. It's looking pretty good. I do have some great close-ups here at the end and I'm going to show you that other card one more time just to kind of show you the differences between the two. Now here I'm just going to show you the original card and you can see that this card actually, of course I added sequins, but you can see these are different layers. We have a die cut greeting, we have the strip, the black strip, the actual uh, distressed part is also a different layer and this is just one layer. It's a very inexpensive way to make some amazing cards. Thanks so much for joining me and enjoy these close-ups right here and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button. If you want to see more, be sure to visit thecreativegrove.com. We have a great newsletter with e-tips and more exclusive videos that you won't find anywhere else. Look forward to connecting with you online. Just hit one of those social channels at the bottom. And if you would like to see a couple more tutorials, I have a few listed right here. I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.